So growing up in a Magnolia, what are some some of the crazy, crazy things that you would see as a younger child? You know what? Like I got a crazy like mosquito story. Like one day, like me being young, like I was a, like I was addicted to dice games. I remember one time, like I got I remember I was put to be in school. And I was shooting dice with a bunch of old heads and my mama called me. I got my ass tore up, but like I said, um, I was, they were shooting dice on Stone Mama porch. And I'm sitting at the dice game. I'm sitting on the, like the wing of the porch though, just waiting for it to be over with. Cause whoever break the dice game up, they gonna, they gonna be popping you off. Or even if the police break the bitch up, like they'll give the money to the kids. So like, that's the only time, like the reason why niggas, like kids used to be around dice games. So, I'm at the dice game, this nigga, mosquito shooting dice, bro, and I kid you not. I don't know what it's called with the girls with the fingers, but this nigga had his fingers done. Like, and that shit made me, I was like, that was the first male I seen. I'm like, this nigga take care of his nails, he different. And like, he doing all this gangsta ass shit and his nails is like that. Like, that shit tripped me out. Like, cause you know, as a young person, you hearing about all this shit, like you hearing about Mosquito, Dooney, Sterling, Gangster. You, like, you hearing about this shit because you right in the heart of it, like. And like I said, you, when you hearing about that shit, so when you finally get up close on them dudes and you be, like, amazed, like, when you see them. So that shit, that was one of the shit that tripped me out when I was young. Like, when I seen him had his nails done, like, that shit tripped me out. As you used to always hang around because you... They they get the kids like the singles and all that. Yeah, like if they break the dice game up, they'll break the kids off. And another dice game story was crazy. You hear me? I was right there when Booby actually got shot. Like that was a crazy day. Like that's when he got shot and lost his arm. Yeah, like matter of fact, him and another person got shot. A dude named um, J Boy. J Boy got shot in the leg. Like they flipped. They, J Boy flipped. Like and when I seen um. That shit was crazy because when nigga went around there and seen what happened, that boy um So you was you was out there like before it Yeah, there. I was out there before it all happened. Like and you know when you just walk off, like and when you hear shots, you run back to the scene and like see what happened. And like that boy was on the porch and it's like um was hanging off on um, by like a ligament. That shit was nasty looking. And um, which McCall was like in the coat with um, fucking um, which McCall was in the coat with the other one who got shot. That shit was that was crazy that day though. But I was out there that day when that happened to Booby though. But they was uh, arguing or something. Probably so. Yeah. About the, about some dice shit. That was crazy. That day was crazy. And he said it was hanging on by like a ligament. Like we was out there watching him on the porch, like. His shit was hanging on by like a ligament. Do you have a, uh, did you have a relationship with him? As far as being like, cause you know, a lot of people, you hear a lot. I had a great relationship with Stone. Oh, Stone. Yeah, cause Stone was a person you can approach. Like he was like Santa Claus. Like, you know, like gangsting them. Like you seen them, like you seen everybody, but you gangster, I mean, Stone was approachable. Like, I got another story. I remember me and Joe, we was on Magnolia. This probably was like, this one Stone had the, um, this one Stone had the, um, he had that Lexus, the 300, the GS 300. This probably was like 97. Me and Joe was going in the TC. But to get to the TC, you gotta go up 7th Street to hit the TC. So he was parked right on 7, 7 in Tyler Donald. I remember Joe asked that boy, I th we thought he wasn't gonna give it to us. Joe asked him, let me see the car. Bro, this is the, this man, brand new GS300 Lexus. He didn't even give a fuck if that boy gave that shit to Joe. We rolled on, um, I'll never forget, we went up Tyler Donald. We went up Tyler Donald, turned on Willow, came back up the long driveway and turned back up back door and gave him his keys. But that's the type of shit Stone did. Like, he ain't care about that shit. So he like he was like the big dog. They ain't getting no bigger than Stone in the project. Niggas knew that. They ain't getting no bigger than water. So why why you think um? Cause I was I was gonna ask. And he kept a lot of shit like niggas don't know like Stone was the reason a lot of niggas from back there was back there like you just can't come back there, bro. Like so yeah, there's no way you just gonna come in the Magnolia Hank without getting the okay. 
especially on the new side, not on our side of the project. That was the kick, like, that was like, man, listen, boy, Six and Clara. And look, Six and Willow was popping more like when, which McCollin was doing it, like gangsta, no, not even gangsta, I said like when Eric Maurice and was doing it, like that's when Six and Cla like Six and Willow was popping. But Six and Clara was the spot, man. Yeah, Circle was the spot. The Circle, you hear Soldier Slim rap about the Circle a lot. Yeah, the Circle was the spot. I know you said you you kind of left after this uh, Shorty Mike situation, and that's kind of when uh, you know Slim put put the DBs under his wing. Did did you have like a relationship with Slim though uh, yeah. prior, like in the projects and all? Yeah, yeah. Slim used to cut our hair. 